Okay guys, I just thought I'd give a quick demo to show the 3D scanner in action now that we've finally got it working so we've got the scanner here with the uh, with the discovery pack attached which is uh, uh, the texture cameras which was the thing that I couldn't quite get working in the first place uh, we've already run the calibration which is a fiddly thing that you have to do every time that you move the scanner or the turntable you've got to do a bunch of scans with the, this calibration plate to get the calibrating right now ideally you would want the lights here to switch off while it's doing the the geometry scan part of the scan and there's this little lamp connector here that allows you to do it but it doesn't work with these kinds of lights so what I'm going to do instead is I've just got the lights set kind of far back and the scanner forward so you can see that it's projecting and it still shows up it still seems to work well enough so now that we've done the uh, calibration I can get rid of the calibration plate <laughs> and the model that we're going to be scanning little alien guy now the only thing is I've had to paint this part here, this rim of his helmet, was black and the scanner won't scan black objects because of the way that it uh, gets the geometry by projecting light onto it. So I've painted that white so that it will come out in the scan and we will fix that afterwards. Okay, over to the software. Alright, pardon my focus. I'm not very good at this selfie business. Okay, so medium apply. Now I'm going to use the turntable. So I took this turntable thing and we're going to have 12 rotations on the turntable. Now the scanner actually doesn't scan very large things. I think it should only just manage to fit the span of his arms in here. Um, hopefully. But it's pretty good at aligning multiple scans, so you can scan it in bits and it will sort of assemble everything. So, we start the scan. And you see it's starting to project those light patterns, which is what enables it to uh, discern the geometry. It gives it a little rotate. Boom! There's the first scan. And as it goes, it's just going to keep doing that. And it's going to add more and more. Should be another, yep, yeah, another piece. And it's going to go round and round. Until gradually we get a 360 degree. One thing I really like about this scanner is that it shows you exactly what it's managed to scan and what it's what it's missed. So once the scan is complete, or once we then we'll um we'll lay it on its back and we'll lay it on its front and we'll do a few more sweeps. And then if there's any bits that it still hasn't picked up on, we can do like individual scans just to sort of get into those corners. You can um You can rotate it and zoom in that so you can see everything happening in real time as it does it, which is really nice. And we're just about there. Around 360 degrees. Should be the last. 
last one. Uh -huh. At this point you can chop off anything that's not part of the model that you didn't mean to include, like any scaffolding that's holding it up or whatever, anything that got into the scan by mistake, but this all looks pretty good. So we we'll tick the tick. Boom. And then what we do Laying down in a different position and continue the scan. Continue scan. And it's going to do the same thing, but lying down on that angle. And then it, when it's completed this scan, it should hopefully take the two scans and join them together. There's been a few times when it's failed to align them properly but if it does that you can align them manually by um, marking some points on both of the scans but 90% of the time the software seems to take care of everything automatically. It's pretty good like that. So, as I say, the one thing that I'm really missing is a light controller. We have to hook up because uh, this lamp controller is only meant to be for like 12 volt lamps, and these are running off 240 volt mains. But it seems to be capturing the geometry all right, regardless. Uh, the scanner part. Um, when it's doing the geometry, ideally it should be in complete darkness so that you get uh, the pattern. It gets a perfect projection of, of the light and dark when it's doing that. Uh, but if we did that, then of course the texture cameras wouldn't be able to capture anything. So this is a little bit of a compromise, but it seems to work alright. Um, but so, yeah, something for the future. Let's see if I can hook up something with a relay switch something like that that takes the 12 volts and um, switches the 240 volts on and off and then I could light it from more sides I could throw in the the other box and um, bring the lights in a bit more but at the moment it's just just trying to find a compromise between lighting the model and not interfering with the projection of the scanner there we are we're just about there It looks like we just just managed to get the uh, the tips of the fingers in. That's about the extent of the scanner. It can't scan it, uh, an object much bigger than that on its own. Okay, and then we tick. Yes, happy with that. Approve. And it should yeah, sandwich both the scans together. And then you can see any bits that are missing. Now I could go around and do another scan like on its front, but what I might do is just, uh, instead of that, I'll just turn the turntable off, so unclick the turntable part, and then I'll just do a few individual scans. So, yeah. we just pop them up like that. And see if we can't get that area in there just with a single scan. Do, do, do. Oh, I thought I turned it off. Okay, we'll cancel that. Cancel! Cancel! Ah, I'll just let it do it. 
How about I untapped that turntable? I can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to steer with the phone at the same time. There you can see the uh, that's as far as the scanner will scan. This is just a demonstration, so I won't um, I won't bother going and getting all the little bits perfect. But uh, it does a pretty good job of um, stitching the model together at the end anyway, so any little bits that it's missed, it, it does a, um, makes a fairly good guess at sort of joining the model up. So any little patches, little bits like that, it can fill them in. There'll be a little bit of thinking to do at the end. Just a little bit of calculation. Last one, I think, or one more. Oh, that's it. Right. Tick. Okay, and then we have the three models stitched together. So there's a few little bits here and there which haven't quite managed to capture, but all over it's looking pretty good. So um, now we say, okay, mesh, and we'll take a watertight mesh. All right, you seal it up medium detail, that's still heaps, and it's going to think for a minute. All of this uh, roughness will get tidied up in the last pass, so we missed a bit there. That'll be all right. Should be anyway. Didn't quite get inside the mouth. It should do a reasonable job, nonetheless, of filling in those gaps. Missed a little bit underneath the fingers. Boom! Now we don't need to smooth or sharpen. So we'll just go apply. Could have used a little bit more to get in there, but so overall, it, um, it does a pretty good 
job at guessing, sealing up the gaps. You can see the pupils there didn't actually scan, see, because they're black. So they've just come in sort of flat. Alright, now it's just figuring out the texture. Stitching all the photos together. I'll take this guy away. There we are. Not too bad. Get on zooming a bit closer. Pretty good, I reckon. A little bit of shadow in there just because I wasn't able to light it perfectly all the way around. I have to adjust that slightly in the texture when we get it into the game. So yeah, there you go. This video is about the making of the clay animated action game Clodhoppers. We're developing the game completely in the open and it is available to play right now. Visit our website at claymatic.games and join our Discord to download the latest prototype, follow the game's development and chat with the team. We'd love to hear from you, so hopefully we'll see you there. In the meantime, thank you for watching.